Okay, I've glued the top spar and uh, unpinned and unconnected this from the jig. So what we're going to do is we're just going to turn it over. And clamp it down. I'm going to go ahead and put the next uh, spar in. It's tight. Hmm. Ah, I see what that is. I have a problem on the rib that I put plywood on. So, I'm going to have to adjust that. I didn't quite get it cut off. So, give me a minute. I'll cut this up and we'll get this installed. Okay, what had happened was, is I, I didn't notch the uh, plywood good enough to, to be relieved for the spar. What I got here is my jig block, and I'm using it as a go-no-go -no -go gauge, and you just kind of check it and make sure that all the ribs are set it on the, set it on the bench, because you know this is 90 degrees to the bench, because we used a square on the end here. It's... Uh, 90 degrees. So if this is 90 degrees and these two sides are parallel, which they are, that means that both ribs are 90 degrees to the bench. And you just kind of go down the, the row and make sure that everything fits, which I already have done here. And uh, once she got that uh, Make sure, you know, we're, we've made sure that all this are square, and then you just go in and uh, glue the spar in, because you know it's in the right spot. And within, after getting all the parts made, it took less than a half an hour to, to lay up the wing. Now, I'm, I don't think that I, my wood is in yet. So, I'm kind of hung out to dry on doing the molding and the trailing edge. But that's okay. We'll work on the other side. I still have to hollow the ribs. I haven't been working real hard on this project. We're not two weeks old yet. And I have fuselage elevator rudder. And I'm going to put some dope on that uh, elevator stabilizer today. we got to get that kind of set and ready to go. And we'll take the jig out and set this aside and we'll start building the uh, outboard side. And we should have that done today. So we'll have the wing this wing will probably take, I don't know, approximately a week to build, only because I'm not really working on it. I'm going to take the rods out. Should, should be nice and straight. It's nice and light, good and straight. All the ribs are of the same plane and height. So we'll set this aside. Try not to set it in a place where it's going to warp it. Maybe I'll hang it up somewhere. I'm not sure where, but we'll build the other side. And, uh, you know, we're on, we're on to having a full airplane. And I'll guarantee... 
guarantee this thing will be on its wheels within three weeks. And I, and I haven't worked but just a, a few hours a day on it. Um, most of the time that I've worked on it, I've been shooting the video. So whatever you see on the video, I mean, yes, there, there are some spots that I'm, I'm not showing where, where I'm cutting or sanding something because there's just no need to see me cut or sand. And that's basically how I do it. I mean, this is a completely thought up, scratch built, out of my head airplane that will work just fine. I will guarantee that it will be just fine. It does have quite a bit of cord at the tip. I'm not sure that I like that, but uh, it's a big wing. I probably should have cut that back a little more, but that's all right. Too late now. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the outboard side and when I get that ready to set up I'll, I'll bring you back in. So see you in a bit. Well, we've uh, already got the inboard wing uh, built. I, I got my wood for the, for the leaving edge but I haven't molded it yet. But I went ahead and cut the trailing edge pieces and I slotted and sand, sanded this uh, groove that I keep talking about and I used the dowel to go ahead and finish slotting this out and I'll tinker with that some more and we'll get it perfect before I glue these two halves together. But what I'm doing now is oh, that's nice. what I'm doing now is I'm going to lay up the outboard wing. I figure I'd better show you how to how I make the two wings together with this split wing setup with uh, building the halves and uh, it's it's relatively simple this is going to be real nice this is the first time I've done the uh, trailing edge on the wing this way because it from start to finish I had it had to be thought out to be done like this but I can see that it's going to be real nice. I'll be making up a, a set of hinges for a gentleman in Canada and I'll show you how I do it and I'm going to mail them to him but I'm no longer selling those hinges so please don't ask me for those hinges. Because I was charging $15 a set for them. And, uh, yeah, that's a lot of money. But it's more work than $15. It's, just, it's not worth it to me. So I'm not selling those hinges. Anyway, we have the wing. Okay, what I did was, uh, I made a jig, as I explained to you on the last, on the inboard, and I had glued an eighth inch piece on the side so that the, the rib sets were two and an eighth apart. Well, I sanded that eighth inch piece off, and the inboard, or the outboard side, is going to be... two inches. So we're going to have 26 inboard, is that right? Or maybe I got I have to put a sixteenth back on it. Because <clears throat> I don't want a whole lot of asymmetry. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to 
glue a sixteenth piece back on it to get it correct. We have twenty seven and a half on the inboard. And twenty seven and a half and twenty six that would leave an inch and a half of a symmetry, and we ain't going for that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue a 16th inch piece onto the side of this for the rib spacing. Because we don't want an inch and a half of a symmetry. So... Okay, that's pretty good. And now we'll glue a piece on the side here. I think we'll do it on the bottom, so I don't have any problems with that uh, piece. And what this does is it keeps everything perfectly parallel and 90, 90 degrees to the building table because this block was sanded 90 degrees now when doing a wing like this split wing in a uh, two-piece configuration the most important thing is is to leave the center rib loose we are not going to glue that rib on until after the wing is joined together so we're going to start at the tip and work in Blue is just something else. I have this block marked up down so so we know where it stands. Now I gotta get this lip off the back because if I don't the rib will be in crooked. So that clean that up. Alright, that's uh, the first part. We'll slide the tip down. We know that uh, we're going to be here. Now I've notched the trailing edge first on the router and I've left a two inch, a four inch end on it. And I believe that stops right at the one, two. So we got to have two there. So we go one.
I'm going to go ahead and just, we'll run through this. It's very boring, but I'm going to run through it just to show you how fast it lays up this way. And we get an approximation of where these go. Yeah. And they're moving around a little bit, but that's okay, because uh, they'll quit moving when I tack the trailing edge on it. I just want to get it kind of pre-positioned in a spot where I think uh, it's going to be close. Because we definitely want to measure before we do any gluing and get the square on it, make sure that it's square. This wing is going to be 60 inches with a should have anywhere from a half to three quarters of symmetry in it. Three quarters, I hope, if I figured it right. We're not even two weeks old yet, and uh, by two weeks I'll have a, you know, all the components to start putting it together. And I have not, I have not worked on this very hard. Oh, thank you luck. This is going to be 26 inches, or, or 26 and in, uh, in change. 27 and a half. Going to be 26 and three quarters. And if it's not, I'll have to adjust the uh, 16th inch spacer down to a 32nd. So let's measure. What did I do with the ruler? No, that ain't it. <laughs> Boy, this old timers is something else. No, I didn't put it up there, and I didn't set it down here. <laughs> well, cut the camera while I look for the, the yardstick. Well, that kind of thing happens when you got so much stuff in the place. Okay, let's take a guess here. No good. No good. <clears throat> so I have to readjust that. Twenty 
seven and a half. Yeah, I should have just left that sanded off, so I'm going to have to sand that 16th piece off that I sanded here, because we're at 28 inches. And uh, we'll make it 2, plus it gains 332nd each spot. Because I do want this to be perfect, so I'll be back in a minute after I sand this piece I just glued on off. Okay, only took a second to sand that sixteenth off. I think sixteenth times three times, thirteen times, that'll be an inch. So that should, that, uh, should bring it down. So let's give it a try and see what happens. a bit. Now we're already a quarter inch shorter. Three-eighths shorter. Remember, I have my uh, my square here to keep make sure they're perpendicular to the workbench because I want every rib to touch that sheeting. I do not want any scallops in this wing. Otherwise, I've defeated my purpose of doing it this way. The only wings that don't have scallops that I've seen Besides of my Viper, I think that was Viper 3, <clears throat> are foam wings. Viper 3 had no scallops because it was 100% just like this wing. 332nd super light contest wood. Okay, that made it an inch shorter just by eye. So let's see what we have here. We're at 27 and a quarter. Still not short enough, so I need to I need to take a little bit more off of that. <clears throat> Maybe a just a smidge. And we'll reset it. enough we can start setting the ribs. I'll put in this because if it's not then I won't have to move it much. This is the top spar and that'll hold the tops of the uh, the ribs from moving. And we'll do the uh, bottom here. <clears throat> I 
the trailing edge. Okay, make sure this is square. Should be. It is. And the reason why that it's square without having to use a square each time is that this jig block is square. This is square with this angle here. So if you rest this right up against the rod, <coughs> the jig rod, that means that the rib should be square because the trailing edge is parallel to that jig rod. If that makes sense. And we're just tacking them in anyway, so. because I won't detail glue it until I get all the tails set. And, and let me tell you, this, this system builds an absolute 100% dead nut straight wing. can't get any more straight than what this method does. Unless it's a foam wing. Let's check and make sure that it's still running parallel. Or 90. And before I glue this up here, I'll come back with my square that goes to the bench to make sure that it's the rib is at 90 to the bench. <clears throat> so we'll continue going down the road here. I want to make sure that I got the right length inboard wing I don't remember there's no plans to this I've showed you how to just build something out of your head you don't need plans you don't you don't need any advice. You don't. It, they're all so oh, simple. It doesn't take an aircraft engineering degree to build these. First off, nobody's life depends on it. So if you make a mistake and it hits the ground, well, what do you lose? You know, you lose some time it's just not that big a deal a lot of guys try to make it a big deal but it's really not
So in just a few minutes, we've we've set the ribs. Remember this rib, the center rib, stays loose till I join the two together because I'm going to join, slide the rods between the two wings so that the, the rods hold the two wings together so that they were built on rods and the rods are straight, the wing has to be straight. If I could have done it all in one, if I had longer rods, I would. Let's measure it and see what we got. Perfect. 26 and a half. 26 and a half. And 27 and a half. Plus 6 inches. Let's see what they can't can't even think. Twenty six plus twenty seven plus six. Twenty six point five, twenty seven point five plus six. This is zero. Twelve, thirteen, that's twenty. Sixty inches exactly. Perfect. So that's how I Laid them out, figured out the uh, the airfoil, showed you the uh, basic uh, stack sanding method. It's and every rib is perfect. I mean, you, there's no way to get it any better. Just even laser cutting is you know it's that good. So, I'm going to cut the camera, I'm going to tinker around, there's not a whole lot of sense in me showing you, you know, that I'm tinkering on this, that, and the other, because I have to go back and check and make sure each rib is straight to the bench. <coughs> straight to the bench, and then we're going to tack the, uh, the front spar up there. So it's pretty, pretty boring from here. I know some guys want to see me sand and all this other business, but there's really not much need in it. So I'm going to cut the camera. We're going to mold up some skins tonight, too, after dinner. That way, tomorrow when I come back, skins will be dry. We'll plug them leading edge skins on there. I'll put in the uh, shear web. And uh, we'll be ready to go. This wing did take longer to build than, than normal, only because I didn't work on it. But it's coming out nice. So... Okay, it's been a couple, it's been a day or so since I made uh, 
any video progress because I really haven't been working on this. I've been just tinkering. But I did get the uh, sheeting on the front and the cap strips and all the uh, webbing in the in the trailing edge. And what we have here for weight is two and three quarter ounces. So we're looking at uh, a complete wing less the tips around five ounces. A little over five ounces, maybe uh, two and three quarters would be uh, five and a half ounces. And that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, I'd like it to be lighter, but this is a big wing. Big wing. We'll just do a little quick calculation here on what I think the wing area is going to be. We have a 60 inch span. I wish I wouldn't have made the tips so big, but uh, kind of the way it goes. Okay, so let's take the calculator. Nine point sixty minus. Times nine points equals five twenty six. Now this is just a rough a rough guess on the wing area. Five point six and a half span. It's uh it's nine and three quarters see what the root is here. To, like I say, a lot of cord. going to guess on the uh, on the wing tip so we got three times okay we'll clear that we'll say come on a stupid thing clear we'll say three inches on that times 54 minus three we'll say times uh, 26 20, 27, 81, 81, clear, 81, and now we're going to figure the tip, and three quarter by three times two. Big wing. 39 on the tips plus uh, 81 inches on the flaps plus 67 526 713 squares so we'll say 720 because I made the uh, kind of calculations for error. Big wing. Let's see how that works out if I do it half span. We'll say 13 times 60. 
clear. I don't understand why this thing does this. Thirteen. Yeah, yeah about 7.30, clear. So, it ought to, be a, ought to be a good performer, but it's real light for the one half. We'll go ahead and uh, start working on the other half. I have uh, one, two, three, four stiffeners yet to put in for spars, and I'm working on that now, but I thought that I'd <clears throat> just kind of bring an update of what I've been doing, because I, I surely haven't been working on it very hard, and I need to make a video tonight, because I said that I would do this once a week for this project and uh, I do apologize that I have been working on it but I just have so much stuff going on and you know the NAS is coming up we haven't been able to fly the park's been flooded or closed or whatever it's a good thing I'm not entered in open this year well, first off I never do any good anyway because we don't really start flying around here till next month seems that every year, you know, we just don't have any way to practice because poor weather, either windy or raining or flooded. I don't have the uh, advantage of having a field in my backyard. My backyard's not even big enough for an 049. So, I'll go ahead and cut the camera. I'm going to tinker with this a little more. Well, I was supposed to uh, upload the video Friday or Saturday. Today's Monday. We're in our third week now, so we got uh, 14. We're on our 15th day. And I really haven't, I didn't make a whole lot of progress. But uh, I thought I'd show you how I'm going to install the landing gear blocks in this and uh, we're going to zoom in here I need to dump out the uh, shavings of this particular wing I don't want that crap rattling around inside the wing ah, broke the rib it doesn't matter it gets cut out anyway but we'll go ahead and glue it back on just to hold it. The center rib gets uh, cut out when we glue them together. Okay. I'll have to be careful. Let's uh, take some measurements. We'll cut some wood. I'll show you how I make the landing gear blocks. Now, the landing gear is just a notch that's cut into the rib. Uh, I'm not sure whether I showed that or not, but it's not much of anything. I, well, I'll show you here on this wing. The landing gear notch is cut out here, and then I have relieved the sheeting where that notch is. But we have to have a plate for the gear to sit on so what I do there is I take a eighth inch, eighth inch plywood and we're going to basically cut it to size. Let me uh, true up this end here. So, 
what I'm going to do here is we're going to cut it to length. So we got two of them that way. don't have a table saw, this Dremel table saw that I bought from one member here on the forum has been great. I'll just go ahead and cut two of these when I so I have the length here now I need the uh, the width and of course I'll just sand it for a nice tight fit Okay, we have two plywood floors here, and uh, well, they really aren't quite wide enough. Cut them too small. That's wide enough, I guess. Wide enough on one side, but not on the other. What's up with that? So we have to relieve this. This must not be square. So we need a little bit bigger piece. Sorry about that. Sorry about the rigmarole, but I gotta have it right. I would rather waste two pieces and have tight fitting things and then uh, save a piece and have a loose. <laughs> Instead of cutting the other one, I will cut it custom for the other side. So, grind some I guess. Maybe I should have had it fitting better before I started this business. Mm. 
but we're not in a big rush. I have a year to complete this. We also on this model made the gear slightly closer together. I didn't want to span all that out that far. That's a little tight still. So we sand a little bit off this. do is I just eyeball it. I want to eyeball the center of this piece of wood, the uh, platform that this is going to set on. I normally ah. <coughs> I don't have any piano wire. Hmm. No eight inch wire. What's up with that? Must have bent up all the landing gear wire. I need a piece of eighth inch before I can even go on any farther. this uh, mailing tube with all my different lengths of brass and copper and piano wire. There we go. Not enough to make a landing gear but enough for the spacing. So I get a piece of uh, piano wire and I center it up here and um, let's see I bought there it is so we're going to cut a couple pieces off of this so I can make it easier to use
Now this is 8 inch basswood. And the reason I use basswood is just lighter. You could make it out of light ply or regular plywood and it would be stronger. However, it would be much heavier. So, I choose to make it out of basswood. You just take the uh, piece of wire, hold it in there straight. We're going to white glue these plus CA them so I can move on to the next. We run a bead of uh, white glue along one side. Kind of made a mess there. Got glue on the wire. But that's alright. Just wipe it off. Put her in the center. Normally don't use white glue, but I thought I'd try it at this time. It's kind of messy, so I don't think we're going to do that again. So instead of doing white glue again, I'm going to use just my CA method. And I sandwich this together like so. And then I just well make got to make sure it's centered and in straight. You want it right in the center of that uh, first block on both ends. Problem today. Yeah, white glue is not a good idea. Okay, that's close enough. Actually, no. So let's tack this so it's on there. Move the wire over. Make sure it's nice and tight. Some people glue the wire down, CA the wire down to the to the plywood and then break it out. I don't do that, but you can. You just want to make sure that that wire is in that groove tight. You don't want any slop in these in this landing gear system. not a good idea. So I, now that I've tried it, I don't suggest using white glue. I just CA it together like I normally do. Take the wire out. You have a, you have a landing gear mount like this. We'll go over to the uh, table saw and clean it up and then sand it off.
there you have it. Now we have a landing gear block that will go in, in this uh, nicely. We'll drill a couple holes, but before we do that we have to cut the door because you want to drill the holes for the blind nuts and the door together. So for that, <clears throat> we're going to get a piece of 16th and we're going to cut the door. Cut and sand the door together with the, uh, the landing gear block. However, we'll have to make the door slightly smaller, but I want to make sure that the, uh, the holes are in perfect alignment. So let me cut this up. Yeah, we'll cut this on a bandsaw. We now have a door and the uh, floor. What did I do with it? Got to be right here. Well, it disappeared. <laughs> oh, there it is. Here we have the door and the floor. It's a little bit bigger, so we need to sand that off. door and the floor are exactly the same size. We're going to mark the front with a line. And what I found is, is we're going to come out right above the rib with the landing gear wire. So we want the um, we want to drill a hole behind the wire because if you drill in front, the wheel or the wheel pant will be blocking access to the hole. So you want to go from the back for the first one. Might need my uh, other pen. The back for the first one, and the front for the second one. Let's see, we're going to we're going to have to have a mounting block or a retaining block on this, so that's got to go here. So our block will come over a half inch. Our uh, bolt hole has to be there. So they're approximately about an inch apart to hold the door on. You don't need a whole lot, you know, a lot of space for torsional, because all this does is hold the wire in. You could probably get away with one bolt, but I've been using two. So we'll go ahead and drill a couple holes. For this. Make sure that they're up centered and centered. And then of course we're going to have to have I, I just use a piece of maple motor mount. We're going to have to have some kind of stop on this. Or retainer. For the landing gear to go into. 
Now, all I have is a uh, 15 minute epoxy, so I'm going to have to uh, epoxy this and let it set. But let me drill a couple of holes. I go ahead and mount my blind nuts and epoxy the backs of them, but now the the uh, the door exactly matches the floor, so we can go together with this without a big deal. We'll have to uh, cut a piece of motor mount and uh, glue it onto the. Uh, to this. Okay, motor mount. What happened to the piece? I got too much shit here. Okay. It gets glued on like that. goes on the back and then when it dries I'll round this off just to remove a little bit of weight because you don't need all that wood there and it glues up this glues to the plywood rib inside and this glues down to the rib and then we're going to box it in and it makes a real nice clean landing gear setup I didn't think it up I don't know who did I think probably Bob Hunt. But see, I'm not the type of guy that... I don't have to take credit for anything because I don't care as long as it works. Brett Buck has the best bell crank set up. Hey, I don't care I didn't invent it. It works. It's good. So I use it. Alright, so I guess we'll, we'll just white glue this on here because I mix in the epoxies. I don't have any really. And I have a lot of faith in white glue. <clears throat> Furniture has been made out of white glue for many eons. So we'll come back after this dries. It's probably going to be about a half an hour. I just put a clamp on it. I have some other things I need to do anyway around the house. I really need to get in here and clean this mess up. But I keep saying that, but I'm too anxious in building the airplane. So that goes there. We got the front and the front. 
All right, we'll see you in a short. Maybe. There we are.